If you're happy with the same old ways of dating, if you enjoy sucking at communication, and you have no desire to improve your romantic life, then our podcast might not be for you. But if you want some out-of-the-box ideas to deepen your current relationships, broaden your sexual horizons, develop a better understanding of yourself, or learn more about non-monogamy, then you've come to the right place. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. And this is the Multi-Amory Podcast. On this episode of the Multi-Amory Podcast, we are talking about emotional responsibility, otherwise known as owning your shit. That's right. We're going to be talking about what it means to be responsible for your emotions, both, uh, you know, finding that balance, not being too responsible for them, but also taking ownership of them. Uh, it's a very important topic and one that's very close to all of us because it's something that all of us have have struggled with in the past on either side of it and currently struggle with all the time, right? Like this is an ongoing thing, learning to understand your emotions and manage them in the best way possible. Yeah, honestly, there have been times in my life where I, I just think that like human relationships are just too emotional and I kind of long for dating a Vulcan. Oh, I see. Yeah. There's some days when I feel like that. Like, can I just have an emotion of pure, or sorry, a relationship of pure logic? I'm sick of all <laughs> of these wibbly too. wobbly f- feelings. I'm tired of this shit. Mm-hmm. Well, it's challenging if one of you is super emotional and then the other one is not. Yeah. That can provide problems as well. For yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, I also think that, that, I mean, come on, let's, let's be real, Dedeker. Like, Vulcans, at least Spock does have emotions, right? Spock is yes. half human, though. He is half human. I know. That's oh, why that's I made right. the caveat. That's why I was like, well, well... Right. But I would also argue that based on some of the Star Trek lore, it does seem that all of them actually do have emotions. They have They're some. Just it's really just about the way that they them. process it. Yes, that's the thing. And honestly, actually, I really didn't, even get, didn't get on the Vulcan train until I had a sex dream about uh, Zachary Quinto, Dr. Spock. Um, oh, well, who hasn't, though? Oh, God. And right. ever uh-huh. since then, it's just, yeah. No, I feel like yeah. all of my sex dreams about him, though, were when he was on Heroes as Siler. Oh, yeah. But as he was like, a bad guy on Heroes. No, I know, but he was so it's better dreamy. than when he was in, in American was Horror so Story. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, yeah. He was really bad in that. He was great, but bad. Yeah. Well, let's not talk about emotional responsibility. Let's just talk about sexy Zachary, Zachary Quinto. Quinto. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um,. Okay, but but seriously though, um, <laughs> but seriously though, Zachary Quinto, but th- that face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But he seriously is, yes. though, emotional responsibility. What the heck is emotional responsibility? That's you know an what? excellent question. Yeah, that's a great question. I'm glad that you asked. Yeah, so I think it's it's understanding that your emotions come from you and not from other people. I've, I've mm-hmm. definitely been in a situation or I've been in other situations like with myself and with my partners where somebody says, hey, like you made me feel X. Yeah. And that's not mm-hmm. necessarily taking emotional responsibility for what you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Right. The idea that someone else or something else makes you feel something. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And of it, course, and of course, always your emotions are going to be influenced by external factors. You know, we're not saying mm-hmm. that you know, anything you feel, you're just totally making it up. Um, right. But, sure. Right. But yeah, the fact that there is the influence, but ultimately your emotional response comes from you. You know, no yeah. one can generally actually make, hold a gun to your head and make you feel something. That's true. Right. Yeah. That they would be holding the gun to your head, which would be triggering fear in you. <laughs> 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 but they're not actually making you feel the fear. It's like this weird, subtle difference, but it's, yeah. but it's important. Um, And I would say the second part of emotional responsibility is taking ownership for your emotional responses and the way that you react to your emotions. Yeah. For example, I'm not always going to be able to control when I feel an emotion. So, you know, maybe you make me really angry. I just said you make me feel angry. You guys were supposed to yell at me for that. No. Um, right. Say you did that. something and then I felt I felt angry because of, you know, related to something that happened that triggered anger in me. Either way, I still have 
I still have control over how I react to that. Mm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I can make the choice to punch you in the face or yell at you or cry about it (laughs) or, you know, take a moment to like breathe and think about it. Right? There's a lot of different options, but whatever I choose, I'm responsible for that. Yeah. Right? That I have Mm -hmm. ownership for my own emotional reactions. Yeah. Dedeker, did you want to do the third part of this? Yeah, I think I think the third part of emotional responsibility is also kind of having an awareness um, to recognize the temporary nature of emotions. Um, And this one can be really hard, you know, because especially when you're in the middle of a negative emotion, it's so easy to feel like oh god this is my life forever from now on you know (laughs) right and i mean sometimes obviously this can happen on a clinical level you know like with chronic depression Mm -hmm. um you know where you can get at the bottom of that depression well and it feels like nothing's going to come out of it but but to not take it to that clinical level just talking about you know kind of everyday emotional response that you know maybe someone triggers you and you get really angry or something disappointing happens at work and you get really frustrated that Mm -hmm. um you know, part of emotional responsibility is recognizing like, yeah, things suck right now in this moment, but like, it's going to pass or things suck right now, but I know that this is not who I am, or I know that this is not what my life is, or I know that this is not what existence is. Um, Uh, so I think that's another important factor of it. Can you, can you hit us with that, that info about like the lifespan of, of emotions that, that I I can't remember where you learn about this on like a a retreat or in some sort of Buddhist thing or this is, this is a little bit controversial because I I couldn't really find the actual science to back this up. Mm -hmm. Um, but what's kind of tossed around is that um, when you experience some kind of emotion, whether it's happiness or sadness or or frustration or jealousy or whatever, um, you know, those are usually attached to some kind of physical sensations in the body. You mm-hmm. know, maybe when you're angry, your face starts to feel flushed. Or maybe when you're mm-hmm. feeling scared, your stomach c- kind of starts to twist. Um you know, usually that's how we even know we're having an emotion at all, um, is because there's some kind of physical response in the body. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you do not actually feed that physical response, like as in if, you know, you suddenly get a thought of fear, if you don't sit there and kind of obsessively think about the thing that you're afraid of or start to to think about all the ways things could be worse or start to panic, um, that physical sensation in your body does not last very long, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, And people quote a variety of of durations. Some people say, you know, it only lasts about 60 seconds or 90 seconds. Some people say it lasts as short as seven seconds. Um, If you let that physical sensation just arise and pass without feeding it, that it's actually quite short. Um, Which again, you know, I couldn't find any kind of actual information to back that up. I can speak from anecdotal experience that I found that to be actually quite true Mm -hmm. (laughs) um yeah yeah and it's it's a tricky one too because um this is something i notice a lot in the workplace is that complaining about something that you're feeling we have this social glue of like i complain about something and then you complain about it too or you agree with me about Mm. complaining about it and that's how we sort of bond with each other but really what we're doing is we're feeding that cycle like we're sure. still feeding that feeling. So you it doesn't actually make you feel any better, even though it might feel like it is at the moment. Um, mm. But, you know, like I know That's that uh, there was a big campaign a few years ago, that, you know, it was on Oprah, whatever, about like stopping complaining. Um, that, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, that you can you be upset that about while, stuff. Jess, right? It's something that I always kind of try to keep in mind. And sometimes I'm better than others about it. But um, yeah it's yeah it definitely makes a difference though like when you're feeding that by complaining Mm -hmm. you do tend to feel those feelings more often yeah so i feel like when we talk about emotional responsibility um kind of the easiest access point is to talk about what's probably going to be a familiar experience to many people which is the experience of of not taking emotional responsibility um, uh-huh. either yourself not taking responsibility or being with a Someone partner else, or, a, yeah. or a person yeah, who doesn't take responsibility. Right. Um, and um, we've all been guilty of this at some point. Sure. Mm-hmm. And we've all also been on the receiving end of this. But it's things like, you know, when conflict breaks out between you and a partner and you say to your partner, well, you did this thing and you made me angry. Yeah. Um, right. Or you, or you left and went out on a date and you made me feel lonely. Um, mm-hmm. Or you were texting with someone else and you made me feel jealous. Um, right. 
And so that and so that's it's this interesting thing because it's not like we're telling you that you can't say that you felt jealous or you can't say that you felt angry, you can't say that you felt sad, but it's that it's pinning it on your partner. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. even though it may seem so totally logical, you know, in our in our brain it seems so totally logical like they did this thing, I got angry, this so cause they and effect, did this right? to me. Yeah, cause and effect. Yeah. Um yeah. Uh, but again, as we established at the beginning, you know, your emotions come solely from you um Mm -hmm. and it's it's pretty much never just the result of an external factor it's also the result of all kinds of causes and conditions Mm -hmm. and triggers and neuroses um and assumptions within you and also going with that is the idea that if a partner does something that triggers that feeling in you that that they that that somehow you're stuck there forever now that they've Mm -hmm. like permanently Mm -hmm. changed or like at least long-term changed your mental state Right, mm-hmm. and that's not mm-hmm. necessarily true, um, yeah. but yeah. but I definitely yeah, know certainly. I've gone to that place before, um, you know, and I've had partners that have where it's just like, ah, you made me feel this way, and now I can't ever feel another way, right? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you, I've just been destroyed by this yeah. thing. I think this is also related to um, sometimes we can kind of get trapped in this phenomenon of of feeling like. Well, something happened and I feel hurt. Therefore, mm-hmm. you hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah. And, and this has come up a lot with people that I've coached, actually, because especially with couples, you know, who are kind of feeling out the initial bumps of opening up a relationship um, of kind of right. reassuring people right. that you might be doing everything completely correctly. Um mm-hmm. And your partner may still feel hurt, but that doesn't yeah. mean that you did something wrong or telling someone like, you know, everything may be going totally smooth, but you may suddenly still feel jealous. And that doesn't mean that your mm-hmm. partner did something wrong. And it doesn't mean that like you've done something wrong. Um, yeah. Right. There yeah. is, <laughs> especially right. with yeah. the jealousy thing, there's, uh, that's a really important differentiation, I think, to be aware of, because so often we will feel things um, if we're new to polyamory or even if we're not, that just mm-hmm. come up. And instead of blaming it on someone mm. else to kind of take responsibility for that is incredibly important. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I, you know, I still feel that from time to time and maybe more often than I'd sure. like to admit of uh, it, just having a twinge of something like shit that kind mm-hmm. of sucks or that kind of hurts. But me being able to differentiate like my partner is not doing this to me. I, it is something that I need to work on mm. and I need to get better at. That's a huge difference. Yeah, I mean that's 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 a big one, the the jealousy mm-hmm. thing. Just, you know, I know that there are there are a few people out there who write blogs about polyamory or whatever who talk about never feeling jealous. <laughs> uh, and that's something that are. I'm like, I cool, like good for you, I guess, but yeah. like that's not me. Like I'm not no, someone yeah. who's like, oh, I have no jealousy, so poly's easy in that way or yeah. whatever, right? Like yeah. poly's something that I believe in and makes a lot of sense to me, but it's not something that's easy all the time, but no. neither was monogamy, right? Like yeah. Yeah. there, I don't think life is set up to be easy all the time. Mm-hmm. If yeah. it was, I feel like we'd all be bored. Like that <laughs> might, that might sound nice, but I feel like we'd all just be like, whatever life, mm-hmm. who cares? Yeah. <laughs> uh, for sure. Can we talk about the other side of this though? So we've talked about yeah. blaming your partner yeah. for making you feel sad or or for making you feel lonely or whatever but i think there's also something really um tricky if you basically if you put also the other side of your responsibility for being happy onto your partner and Mm -hmm. i feel like or or either like saying that they're the reason why you're happy or expecting that that's what a partner would do and it's a tough one because that idea is super prevalent in yeah. our books and in our movies and plays and all of that, right? And also, like it the, also on the surface level does not seem like a bad concept also right. is the other part of it. Right, because yeah. we have these these concepts like soulmates and stuff like that, right? That it's, that it's like, oh, well, when you find the one, then it's all easy. Yeah. Um, and most people who've been married for a long time will will back up the idea that it's not <laughs> easy. It's always, yeah. you know, it's always work. It's always growing and changing. Absolutely. Um, but that idea, like the the you know, you complete me, that whole idea, I think, is mm-hmm. actually a very toxic idea to your own happiness because it's one, it's going to make you probably 
end or throw away a lot of relationships that could actually have been really good ones um, because they, it, they didn't solve all of your emotional problems. And so it's like, well, that can't be the one. I'm just going to get rid of that. Or like, oh, I sometimes felt unhappy in that relationship. That can't be it. Um, and then also just even if you do find someone who does kind of give you that happiness, yeah, that that's not necessarily a sustainable thing or a healthy thing to put on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, and I definitely have been on both sides of this. I've yeah. I've been on the side of like if someone's not there, I'm not happy, and it's because I need them there to make me happy. Um, yeah. And then I've also been on the other side too, where it's like, gosh, I feel this burden of like I'm responsible for all of your happiness. Like, fuck, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. what if I'm just not feeling it that day, or I'm having a bad <laughs> yeah. day? Like, what can I do? Because I'm responsible for this other person's whole yeah. like whole sense of well-being right yeah yeah that's a lot to put on another person mm-hmm. for sure um and i mean even you know i mean it's a lot if you're in a monogamous relationship and kind of behaving in this way that's a lot of pressure to put on another person um yeah but even if you have multiple partners um it's still a lot. it's still yeah. it's yeah it's still a lot it's still not necessarily a healthy thing mm-hmm. to do um no. But, I mean, before we kind of get into, you know, figuring out what are the actual practical ways to incorporate emotional responsibility, Mm -hmm. I do want to talk about, um, I'm of the opinion that there is actually something as taking too much emotional responsibility. Mm -hmm. Um, I learned this the hard way in a past relationship of mine, um, um, in my relationship with Brad, when, like, relatively early on in the relationship if something happened or if he said something or if he did something and I felt upset about it or I felt insecure about it or I felt jealous or, you know, or I felt, you know, something negative, Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, I think in, in that phase, I was trying so hard to be a good poly person and I'd just be like, okay, like, gotta take all my own shit, all my own shit, all my own shit. Okay. Just take responsibility. Um, and just like, do what you gotta do. Just like go sit and meditate, um, mm-hmm. go read a bunch of self-help books um, and just get yourself to get over it and then everything will right. be fine. Um, and that worked to a certain point um, until eventually it all kind of actually had to come out because like, there were actually numerous things that I should have said something about, um, you know, or that I should have brought up or, you know, boundaries that I should have maintained mm-hmm. but that I didn't kind of in this interest of emotional responsibility. Um mm. So I know it's a tricky thing, but I think that there right. is a balance to be struck between, um, you know, uh, not blaming your partner for something, but also knowing mm-hmm. when it is appropriate to actually bring something to your partner. Yeah, um, I mean, there are things like gaslighting that mm. obviously mm-hmm. Brad was kind of, you know, he did to you at well, times. Well, that's, that's a whole, whole other but, story. But that's the thing. I mean... It, you have to make sure that you are taking responsibility, but also um, making sure that you're not being hurt by your partner. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. there there mm-hmm. are two separate things. Yeah, right. And, and it is that fine line yeah. trying to figure out which is which. And I, and I kind of feel like it's not something that you can just have an answer and always know what it is. But it's more mm-hmm. that it's important to always be asking that question, right? Yeah. Of where am I on this balance? Because on the one hand, it could be tempting to say, if you see something that's a pattern that's recurring, then it's like, oh, that's something that's a problem then. But it's like, but maybe that's a pattern in yourself that Mm. you still need to do work on, right? So there's always these two sides to things, but it's, but it is being willing to ask that question and, and, um, you know, finding that balance between advocating for what it is that you actually need. And like you said, I think you said it well, Dedeker, like the, what your boundaries are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and having the self assuredness right. to know what those are. Right. Yeah. To be like, yeah. here I am, this is what I need and what I don't need, and mm-hmm. this is what I'm capable of. Like, a lot of people, I think the three of us are relatively good at being able to say, like, hey, I know that this is my shit and that I need to own it and that I need to work on that. Mm-hmm. And if you're able to do that, then you can know, like, hey, this is a reoccurring pattern within myself or mm-hmm. this is something that maybe is not being fair that my partner's asking of me. Right. Uh, I'm sure. I think we're good about it most of the time. But Some of the time. I'll you're right. speak for myself, uh, not all the time. I should pat myself on the back or ourselves on the back as much as right? I currently and I, am. 
I think there's also, um, you know, also going with that is, is I think some of that can come from this belief that if this particular relationship doesn't work out, whether it's a monogamous one or a poly one, if this doesn't work out, there aren't going to be any others. This is my only shot. I have to make yeah. this work somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I think that can also lead not only to what Dedeker was talking about, but also the idea of just being like, you might be upset about something and being like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. And, and bottling yeah. things up, refusing to feel things, which is something I did for most of my life. Uh, mm-hmm. Emily met me like right around the time that I learned to feel things actually, which mm-hmm. was a tumultuous time, like first learning that. But for mm-hmm. so long I would bottle things up, but then they do reach this point where you just feel like I don't understand why I'm acting this way or why I'm feeling this way. Cause it just kind of bubbles over. Um, right. Or if you insist on being always totally rational about your feelings, like that's not how feelings work. If that's how they worked, they would be called thinkings, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, feelings, they do just, that with, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they do just happen the, you know, they happen inside of you. They, they can be triggered by other things and they do come from yourself. They're not caused specifically by other mm-hmm. things or given to you, but they are irrational. They're also not something that you can have Vulcan levels of control over. Uh, <laughs> And if you do try to do that, it can actually really backfire and end up hurting mm-hmm. you and the people in your life a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess what we really want to drive home here is that taking an emotional responsibility doesn't mean um, that you just you don't feel your emotions or you feel right. your emotions, but you don't let yourself do anything about it. Or you don't let yourself say anything or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like, actually, it's quite the opposite. Right. Yeah, it's that by not letting your emotions rule you, but still listening to them and understanding them can help you do a better job of advocating for yourself in a reasonable way and in a way that's respectful with your partners. But at the same time, understanding that if even then you're not in a healthy emotional situation, that it is something you could get out of. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a tricky balance. And like I said, it's something that you kind of constantly need to be questioning where am I on this balance and like yeah. re recalibrating rebalancing for that. Okay. So we want to get into some more practical advice about how to, you know, how to do these things. Like what are, what are some cues you can look for? What are some techniques that we've learned? Uh, but before that, we want to talk really quickly about some ways that you can help support our show. <laughs> uh, this is something that we really love doing. And the best way that you can support us is to become a patron on our Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com slash multiamory. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash multiamory. Uh, and there you can choose an amount of money that you want to commit every month to supporting this show, helping us do this. Um, if you support at the $5 level, you get to be part of our private invite-only Facebook group where we have amazing discussions all the time, every day. Uh, and cat both, pictures, so many cat pictures. There were a lot of yes. cat pictures recently. Oh, that's so great. Yes. And iguanas, maybe. Yeah, there, <laughs> there were some lizards as well. Yeah. Uh, and, then, um, and then at the $9 level, you get to be part of our monthly video discussion group, which we just had a few days ago. It was uh, awesome. And it was amazing. And when I talk it's about... So good. When I talk like this, yeah, they get better every month. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. And when I talk about how much it means to us that you choose to support this show, like, I really do mean that. You know, we we put every dollar of it back into this show, into putting Mm -hmm. on events, creating things for you guys. Um, I, like, got... I had to, like, stop myself from, like, getting teared up at the end of our discussion group. Just at, like, how much... Surprise, (laughs) surprise. Shut up. (laughs) I, like, how much I appreciated everyone for being there and for, for offering themselves emotionally and their time and their support to this show uh, is really an amazing thing. And we would love to have you as part of that if you're not already. And if you are already, you're amazing. We love you so much. You're so great. Thank you guys. Seriously. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Emily, do you want to talk about toothbrushes? Yeah. um, In my stupid sonic air, as you may have heard, died after less (laughs) than a year. As we heard through the rumor mill. Yeah. (laughs) A little bird may have told you that my stupid sonic air died Uh after only a year of having it. And so... 
um, Jace introduced mm-hmm. me to this little thing called Quip, which is an amazing toothbrush. Very, very affordable. Mm-hmm. Comes in sassy colors. Mine is in gold. <laughs> um, yes. I love gold, so... Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's very affordable. Mine was like twenty five dollars, and mm-hmm. I got a toothbrush, a toothbrush uh, head that goes with it, um, some travel toothpaste, actual toothpaste, and then for ten dollars a month, I get uh, um, for, a new. For no, it's for five dollars for $5. every five dollars for God. every refill, which comes once every three months. You yes. get a new head, which is how often you should be replacing it anyway. I know a lot of you don't. Yeah. But that's what you should be doing. You get uh, fresh head. Right. But if you don't want to pay for your refills for the first nine months, basically, yeah. you get your first two refills for free by using our promo, which you can get by going to tryquip.com slash multiamory. Uh, yes, you can. And then a little thing will pop up that'll say, like, get $10 off your first refills. Uh, basically, that means your first two refills are going to be free. And that's each, you know, three months, and then six months later, you're going to get a new head for your toothbrush, totally free. Um, the toothbrushes also come with a nice little tube that you can put them in for traveling, which I have already used for my most recent trip up to Seattle. Brought my Quip with yeah. me. You put uh, AAA batteries, or no, AA batteries in it, instead of a Sonicare that you need to bring the charger with you. So for traveling, it's amazing. And they also have cute little holders you can stick on your mirror. So I've always imagine this so it's not touching like this, all the gross shit on well, your counter that too and my cats like to knock my toothbrushes into oh the gosh. cat litter but they don't do that with oh, this one <laughs> it's horrible they brilliant. all get thrown away oh, immediately horrible. but these ones all get to be oh, on the mirror so they don't get knocked into the trash um and then also you know you can all get different colors for your whole poly family <laughs> uh, right there in your bathroom. They're amazing. Really recommend it. That's Triquip. T R Y Q U I P. I can spell quip. dot com slash multiamory to get ten dollars off your refills. Uh, and then the last thing is to pre-order Dedeker's book. Oh my Fuck god, yeah. you guys! It's less than a month until my book comes oh, out. Yeah, it is. Less than a month. Holy oh crap. yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I think Already- just. Jason and I already pre-ordered it. I'm mm-hmm. so excited. Already pre-ordered I think it. Just after this episode uh, airs is when we'll receive like the first like physical copies <gasps> to your house. I know it's gonna be oh, crazy. That's exciting. That's so exciting. I know, I'm so excited. I'm can so excited. Can we take for all it. the pictures? We can with take the all book. of the pictures with the book. It's gonna be we'll great. We'll take pictures of ourselves <laughs> bathing in books. Yeah, uh, we're licking the book. Kissing the book. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring us back home here. So the book is the Smart Girl's Guide to Polyamory. Uh-huh. You can find more information about that by going to my website, dedekerwinston.com slash book. You can find a link to pre order it in the episode description of mm-hmm. this show. Or if you look for my name, Dedeker Winston on Amazon, then you will find it. And we will also be celebrating the launch of that book on our tour, which yeah. we will be mm-hmm. doing in Seattle, Portland, San Diego. San Francisco and Los Angeles. So if you're in any of those cities or can get to those cities, we would love to see you at our show. Go to multiamory.com slash events for the dates of all of those shows. Uh, this is all going to be in February 2017. Uh, if you go yeah, we're not and go back in time for the right, show, <laughs> um, you know, click on those links where you can buy the tickets, reserve them. Now they're all like nice, small, intimate venues. We really hope to see you there. Uh, and then we'll all hang out after the show and talk about Dedeker's book. No, but seriously, we'll get a drink, hang out, socialize together. We're really excited to get to meet more of our community that way. All right, All right. let's get back, back to, to it. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the reason why I think that we as human beings <laughs> struggle with emotional responsibility is because when you're in the middle of conflict or you're in the middle of a fight and it feels very you know me versus you Mm -hmm. it can be really hard to take emotional responsibility because then it feels like well that means i'm taking the blame Mm -hmm. and that means Mm -hmm. that i'm that i'm saying that this other person just gets off scot-free um right that i'm losing and that it's yeah Yeah. that i'm losing exactly Mm -hmm. and so that's why it can be difficult for us to actually kind of take a pause and actually kind of take responsibility for our own emotional reactions um yeah however an interesting and i think much healthier way to think about it is the fact that when you take emotional responsibility, it's not that you're like giving up or that you're losing or that you're conceding or anything like that. 
it means that now that you've taken responsibility for your emotions, now you have the power to actually do something about the situation. Right. Um, you know, so for instance, if I'm in the middle of an argument with Jace and we're bickering, 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 and then I realize, oh, wait, like mm -hmm. the reason why I got angry about this is because actually like it reminded me of something that happened in like my last relationship. And so mm -hmm. I thought that it meant that like you didn't care about me or whatever. Um, yeah. So, wow. So like that's entirely on me. Um, but that means that now I have a choice. Like now I can choose to to use kind words. <laughs> um, uh -huh. I can choose to be honest about what's going on. I can choose to then ask for what it is that I need. Um, yeah. You know, like then I have a lot of choices in that situation rather mm -hmm. than just being crushed under the weight of this negative emotional mm -hmm. response. Yeah. And to, to bring this to, uh, you know, a practical thing is that part of that choice could just be to stop, could just yeah. be to, to halt, which to we halt. like to say, right? If you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. To just so Josh and I add a D to it, so it's halted. Dalt. Oh, d d halt. Okay. <laughs> d halt. <laughs> What's the D? Drinking. Or drunk. Uh, yeah, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good, a good one. one actually. I feel like Jace, didn't you also add horny to that? I, we did add that at one point. At one point. point. Yeah. halt <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah. So it's <laughs> It gets halted, <laughs> huh? <laughs> but the point of it, right, is that one of your options is to just say, like, hey, you know what? I'm realizing, like, I'm sorry that I'm escalating this, that I'm causing this to be more of a fight than it needs to be. Like, I'm sorry for my part in that. I just need to stop. Like, can we come back to this later? Right. And set yeah. a time to come back to it. It's not just like, let's not talk about this now. Right. It's not that just like, Oh, we can't talk about this, mm -hmm. but it's like, let's, let's make another time when we can have some time to maybe do some writing, which is something I really like to do. If I'm feeling hmm. super emotional is to write stuff down and That's not, cool. not to like make a list of all my like argument points for this, you know, debate <laughs> you class that this, we're gonna have. You did this, you bitch. But just yeah. for me to just kind of write stuff, get stuff out there onto paper, and when I do that, I can kind of see like, oh yeah, these are the things that matter, or as I write something, being like, yeah, I don't know, that's not really it. It kind of mm. helps me get some clarity. Uh, for me, that's a big handwriting specifically, not typing something. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, but just doing something like to, to pause, right? Mm -hmm. Even yeah. if you don't have that insight right then of like, oh, this is because of this memory of, you know, my mother abandoning me at the supermarket or right. You might not have that epiphany in the moment. <laughs> Did I just touch on your raised, thing? I was raised yeah. in the supermarket from that yeah. moment I lived forth. in the supermarket. There's wolves in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> right. You might not have that epiphany right then, but if you do have that awareness of, oh shit, I'm escalating this. I'm reacting emotionally. I'm letting those control me rather than kind of understanding the emotions and then making choices. Like maybe we just stop yeah. for a moment, even if it's just for a few minutes. <laughs> yes. Um, and so when you do have that ability to kind of pause or to stop really quickly, mm -hmm. it does g give you a chance to then take the time to try to figure out kind of what your triggers are or like what triggered you in that mm. particular scenario. Um, I, I think I remember in the ethical slut, I think that it was either Janet or Dossie talked about how it took her years to realize that she had a weird trigger around like anything moving fast near her face. And I think it was oh. because of like some, it was because of, it was either like some situation where like one of her parents like hit her when she was a child Jeez. or it was like an accident that she was in or something like that, where it was right. like, if she was having any kind of conflict with a partner and if anything fast moved towards her face, um, that like she would just like dissolve into like rage and like mm. the whole thing would go out the window. Um, right. Jason and so that's something that's like, pinched. you know, c completely not related to even what was going on. Mm -hmm. Um, and your triggers may be things that are, that are, you know, less mysterious than that. You know, it yeah. could be just things like, wow, you said this exact phrase to me that like my ex used to say to me all the time. Um, mm. right. And you th know, they won't um, know that, right? Like, and they won't know that <laughs> they don't exactly. Have that context. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, you know, you can find out your triggers. You know, if you want to really get deep into it, you can do some kind of counseling, some kind of therapy to really unpack mm -hmm. any kind of past trauma or past habits, things like that. Any kind of personal development work, even just that, even doing the halt thing of just knowing, like, oh, I know that when I get hungry, I'm really a bitch. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> or even just knowing, like, sorry, guys, I'm super sleepy. That's why I'm really cranky with you right now. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, just, mm -hmm. just kind of getting a 
uh, you know, just getting a sense of what it is that triggers you is a good first step into knowing how to take responsibility for those, for having those triggers. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, the, the next technique that I want to talk about is something that has really been big for me. And I'm actually kind of stealing Dedeker's Thunder a little bit here because this is a meditation related technique. Um, but this is about understanding understanding physically what your emotional responses are mm-hmm. as they're happening. Um, and this is something like where they're that, felt in the body. Right. Like Dedeker was talking earlier about, you know, when you feel an emotion, usually it's in your body somewhere. And yeah. whether you choose to feed that or not, you know, it could just go away. But in, um, <clears throat> again, relating to Brad, there was a time, you know, quite a while when, like, I was dealing with a lot of, you know, a- upsetness and sort of anger at what I perceived as injustice, not mm-hmm. only toward myself, but also for both of you guys. And that mm-hmm. was something that was, like, very triggering for me in a very angry way, right? Of like, I want to, I need to like fix this. I need to to punish the perpetrator of this, right? Or I've got to, right, like something has to happen. Whether the perpetrator at that time was Dedeker for having done something, or if it was Brad for having said something about me or having done something to Emily, or right, like all of this, like all those different combinations. And what this was is specifically a meditation where you think of something that triggers that emotion in you or even just do this when you're having that feeling but is to imagine that you are moving outside of yourself and you're perceiving yourself from right outside and you can like see what's happening in your body you can see what's tightening what's clenching like where those feelings are you know if you're someone who you know sees them as colors mm-hmm. or as shapes or as textures or whatever but the the point of it is to almost like take this step out and you're still feeling this anger or this sadness or this loneliness or whatever but you're kind of watching it and being able to go huh well that's fascinating like this is this is me <laughs> being like that's fascinating like you're fascinating you're, let's try that right like there's all this energy yeah. up in your shoulders and like this mm. this tightness in your throat about that like that's really interesting mm-hmm. that that's how you're reacting to this mm-hmm. um but that, that it kind of takes it takes you from being in this place of like your emotions are this storm around you that you can't escape mm-hmm. to being like oh i can see them happening and that for me was a, a trigger into kind of understanding where those feelings were in my body, but then also being able to then let them go and not keep feeding them because then I'm just mm-hmm. thinking about watching the feelings and watching mm-hmm. as they go away instead of yeah. being caught in this cycle of, Oh, but what if I did this? Or like, Oh, I'm so mad about this. What if I did this other thing? You know? Um, so that was a really helpful technique for me. That's awesome. Nice. Nice. Um, um we should definitely, learn how to communicate what we're feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and a good way to do that is to use I statements. So, mm. for example, when this happened, I felt like X because <laughs> I thought it meant Y mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Instead right. of pinning the blame on your partner, saying, you made me feel this way. Right. How could you do that? You are the bad guy. <laughs> right. Yeah, Instead, so I- yeah, yeah, using the I statement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's so. Huge. Yeah, it, it could be it could be something like, "Well, you didn't text me back right away. Like, you're so irresponsible, and like, you don't care about me." Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a lot. It of could blame. be something like, "Be like, yeah, like, well, when I didn't get a response from you for three hours, like, mm-hmm. I felt, I felt really lonely, and I felt disappointed because I thought that it meant that like you weren't thinking about me, or that like you didn't mm-hmm. care about um, our communication." Um, right. Imagine being on the other side of that. Right. Mm, if someone mm. says like, oh, you didn't text me at all today. Like you weren't thinking about me. You didn't care about me. And you're like, what the fuck? Like you're putting ideas into my head. Like, I don't know what to do with this. You mm, could react yeah. angrily too. Whereas mm, on the yeah. other side, it's like this, you know, this happened. I didn't hear from you today all day. Like I felt really sad. Cause like in my mind that meant that you didn't care. It gives the other person an opportunity to say, oh my gosh, no, that's not at all what it was. It was, I was, busy and stressed about this other thing and I didn't want to burden you with how stressed I was 
or mm-hmm. right or I didn't even know that you were feeling that way I'm so sorry right that it gives them the opportunity to be the good guy and help say hey you don't need to feel that thing as mm-hmm. opposed to mm-hmm. saying you did this you felt this right like yeah. telling yeah. someone else how they feel yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and so as I said at the beginning of this what I do like about emotional responsibility is that then you can kind of use it as an opportunity to be like okay well now that I know that this is what's going on inside of me mm-hmm. this is what I need And Mm -hmm. that may not necessarily be something that you communicate to your partner. It may be something where you realize like, oh, I have a trigger about this because like this happened in a previous relationship. So, okay, I think what I need is just to kind of like take some time to myself and like, Mm -hmm. or maybe I need to take some time with counseling or maybe I just need to go take some time and grab a beer with my best friend and complain about my last relationship, (laughs) Um, you know, to help process that. Um, Mm -hmm. Or it could be something that you communicate to your partner. It could be something like, well like oh okay well you know maybe in the future do you mind like if you are busy with something and can't respond right away just let him you know that really mm-hmm. quickly and then we're cool you know mm-hmm. um, yeah. and something or, like you know, a something monthly like scrum that. is a great way to do that too because mm, then it's yes, not right exactly. when you're oh, upset sure. about it you have a specific time to talk about yeah. that go back and listen to our episode about relationship scrum yeah it's really yes. awesome <laughs> really, really awesome <laughs> sorry to interrupt you yeah. Tedeker please continue No, you're good. Um, I think we hit the main things. I mean, this is such a big topic and like such a big, heavy topic. And I feel Mm -hmm. like this, like I I feel like every single time there's any kind of conflict, big or small in any of my relationships, like this is completely relevant because um, since none of us are dating Vulcans yet, (laughs) these human emotions find their way into every single situation. Yeah. Yeah, they do. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. (laughs) It's true. But like I said, if we didn't have them, we would all just be so bored with relationships, we wouldn't even give a fuck. No, that's true. It's so. true. Very true. It's <laughs> true. And then we wouldn't have a podcast. We'd be podcasting about, like, Nothing. I don't know, fashionable eyebrow styles. Ooh. I, I don't know. Can it's you have Vulcan, fashion Vulcan without Vulcan emotion? Thing. There's your topic to discuss at home. Ooh, Get a group shit. together. Ooh. That's intense. Is it possible Ooh. to have art and fashion? Without emotion. Without emotion. Oh, there you go. You're one. welcome. You're welcome. Your next dinner party conversation <laughs> maybe, is solved. <laughs> maybe the patron group can tackle that one. Indeed. Yeah, totally. Okay. Thank you, everybody, so much. We love you all so much for listening. And uh, if you want to support our show, check out our Patreon. And also, we would love to see you in person at our shows in Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego in February 2017. Uh, hopefully, if this goes well, we'll get to do more tours as well. So we really hope we'll to see to you there. We'll get to do a global tour. That would be amazing. Would be so so. Where can they find out information about our events and tour stuff? Yes, all the information about our upcoming events, including not only the tour, but also some discussion groups, Dedeker's book release, um, and anything else that's coming up, you can find at multiamory.com slash events. Um, or you can just go to multiamory.com and click the events link at the top. Uh, but there you'll have all the links to the events, ticketing information, all of that. It's, it's, uh, the, 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 the big resource of all of those things. We would love to see you at some of our events. We really would. Uh, it would mean the world to us and, uh, we'll see you next week on our next episode. Yeah. All right. Thank see ya. you. Bye. A fit of sing. Hey, this is Dan Savage from the Savage Lovecast and Savage Love, and you're listening to a Swing Set podcast at Swing Set FM.